Hello and welcome to another Marlin 3D printer tool tutorial video. In this video we will be covering the full installation of a BL Touch probe onto our big box printer. The tools you will need are as follows. You will need one BL Touch sensor, a method to mount the sensor rigidly to your printer, some wires, some pliers, a set of wire strippers, and no, your teeth do not count as wire strippers, a soldering iron and some solder, some connectors, some heat shrink tubing, the BL Touch manual, your controller board schematics and manual, and obviously the Marlin 3D printer tool software. If you are unsure on how to install the software, Please click on these links or check the video description to watch the installation tutorials. If you already have a working BL Touch sensor or the sensor install does not matter for your application, please skip forward to the software section of this video. Here you can see the pre existing Big Box IR sensor. You can see that it is currently working, but for the purpose of this video, we will remove it to show you how to install a BL Touch in the Big Box printer. This method can be ported over to almost any printer. The things you're going to need are you're going to need the manual, you're going to read and understand your controller board schematics, you're going to make sure you make good wiring connections. If your wiring connections look smart, then in turn, you are smart. You're going to read the manual many, many times. Read more than one guide on the install. You can compare your installations to other people's and use the forums for any questions or problems that you may have. When you think you are ready and know how to connect and install the BL Touch, start all over again and reread all the documentation and double check. Be careful when connecting the BL Touch sensor and make sure to connect it to the board with the power off. Let's work on the Marlin firmware. You can use Marlin Editor to look and edit firmware files such as configuration.h. Another alternative to in a good editor is Notepad++. Let's go ahead and open up configuration.h in either editor. Scroll down to the Z Probe option area. Activate BL Touch in the firmware by removing the two slashes in front of the line. Scroll down a few more lines to the Z Clearance section. Z clearance is the amount of clearance needed to safely deploy the probe. Go ahead and change both these values to between 3 and 5 millimeters, because that's all the probe requires. Now let's scroll down to Safe Homing. You can also use Control F and type in the word safe and search for that section to get there faster. Make sure Z underscore safe underscore homing is enabled by removing the two slashes in front of the line. Next, let's move over to the invert section and let's make sure that the Z underscore minimum underscore probe underscore end stop underscore inverting is set to false. After that, let's move along to the number of servos. Again, make sure that the define number underscore servos is turned on by removing the two slashes at the beginning of the line and set the number of servos to one. The BL Touch probe only requires one servo. The big box printer uses a Roomba board. For this next section we will need to edit the Roomba underscore pins dot h file in Marlin. Servos normally use PWM2, also known as pin number 5. However, for this application, we will be changing it to number 4 to allow us to reassign pin number 5. So let's change define servo 0 pin to number 4. The colors represented in this picture are the same as on the BL Touch and represent the normal method of connections. However, we will be changing this to the following picture to correct the, the issues. Why? What's so special about the big box? Well, the big box has a PT100 amplifier on pins number 2, 4, and 6. 
Therefore, we can't use those pins and have to use PWM1 instead of PWM2. And that's connected to pin number 5. So then we grab ground and power from right below because ground and 5 volt power are not available on, on pins 2 and 4. I use the socket right below EXT3. Again, make sure in the firmware to change the servo pin to number 4 so it reassigns pin number 5 for our use. We will still use the stock end probe plug location, but will not need all the connections. The big box existing stock end stops have three wires. You can reuse the existing end stop wiring to connect the sensor as long as do you do not use the red wire at all. Now for the servo connections, we will need a cable consisting of three wires. Here some wires that were left over from another project were used to bridge the connection from the board to the BL Touch's main connection. Your wiring color scheme may vary from this one. This cable must be added and plugged in between the BL Touch and the board. Please pay attention to the connection you must now run to make sure all your plugs are correct. Be careful when connecting the BL Touch's sensor and make sure to only connect it to the board with the power off. Again, if you reuse the stock and stop wiring, the red wire on the IR sensor was never connected. Let's go ahead and start the software. Find Marlin 3D Printer tool and start it up. Connect to your printer with correct COM port and baud rate. If you have not donated to the project, a pop-up will appear on your screen. If you haven't donated yet, now would be a great time. All the donation proceeds are used to pay for commercial components that are used in the creation of Marlin 3D Printer Tool. When you successfully connect, parameters for Marlin in your printer will populate the column to show you that you are connected. Now let's go ahead and set up the BL Touch in the software. Let's go to the Configure Z Probe tab. In this tab, make sure you have checked off the checkbox for the BL Touch and then hit Save. Using the self test function built into the software, Verify that your probe is indeed engaging and disengaging. Use your finger to create an illusion of an obstacle and block the sensor from extending. This should trigger a force alarm, meaning too much force was needed to engage the sensor. You can visually verify this by seeing the sensor actually blinking. Go ahead and use the reset alarm button to clear the alarm. Now let's test the engage. Press the button on the software and make sure the sensor fully extends. Now let's test the sensor retracts by using the test release button in the software. If you happen to get a force alarm, it means something is blocking the way for the probe pin to extend. It can always be reset through the software conveniently. With the BL Touch mounted, tested, and working, it is time to test repeatability. 
Let's move to the Z-Probe Offset tab. Go ahead and measure the Z-Probe repeatability using the software. Make sure you define a maximum of four touches for the probe. The greater the amount of time it probes, the more accurate your results will be. You can see the software shows you minimum, maximum, calculates the mean, and displays the standard deviation between its measurements. If your results are within plus or minus 0.02 millimeter, then you have a genuine BL Touch probe and not a Chinese knockoff. Now, let's set our probe height difference. Click Dock Z Probe so that the printer homes the Z axis with our new probe. The BL Touch probes the bed and lifts itself after probing and will return a value in the software where it thinks the bed is. Using a piece of paper as a shim or feeler gauge, lower the nozzle down as you move the paper until you just start to feel drag on the paper. Make sure the drag you feel is from the nozzle and not from the probe. If the probe is dragging on the paper before the nozzle, you need to remount your probe a little higher. A standard sheet of paper is about 0.05 millimeters thick. If you happen to have a 0.05 millimeter feeler gauge, please use that as it will be way more accurate. The software is pre-configured to make its necessary calculations with this 0.05 millimeter standard in mind. Once you've achieved the correct feel, press the button that says nozzle is touching the bed. This will calculate the offset of the retracted Z-probe to the nozzle, also known as an M851 in Marlin. The software will then ask you if you'd like to update your printer firmware with a, note with a new value. Go ahead and do that. Note the value that you have recorded to the firmware and repeat the process a few more times until you get repeated values that are within 0.02 millimeters. Now that our probe is completely set up, let's scan our build surface. If you'd like more details on this process, watch our video on the surface scanning feature. A link will be left in the video description. Go to the Scan Build Surface tab on the software. Let's do a grid of 4 points on the Y axis by 4 points on the X axis, giving us a total of 16 probe points.
Notice the results show what looks like a mountain. This is in fact how bent my x-axis rails really are. One of these days I'll stop and take the time to actually rebuild my big box. But in the meantime, the automatic bed leveling feature of the Marlin firmware will keep me on printing. Thanks for watching. For more tutorials on how to use the Marlin 3D printer tool, please check the video description for links. Also, visit our Google Plus community for help and support.